Across centuries of human building, one question has refused to die. How did the ancients, with no chemicals, no machines, and no science textbooks, make wood last for hundreds of years? Why do Viking ships still rest intact beneath the earth while modern beams crumble after a few decades? From cathedral roofs that still hold up the heavens to forgotten oak bridges buried beneath rivers, they all share one secret, a preservation craft born from water, earth, and fire, a knowledge not written in manuals, but passed down through smoke-filled workshops and shipyards, and understanding it isn't just history, it's survival. Because these same techniques can keep your own timber, tools, and shelters alive for a lifetime, even without a drop of modern treatment. It begins with a paradox. Water, the very thing we're taught to keep away from wood, was their greatest ally. Medieval builders discovered that keeping timber wet could actually make it immortal. They called it seasoning by the river. Today, we call it water curing or bog preservation. When fresh cut timber was sunk in a pond, river, or muddy pit, it didn't rot. It hardened. It became heavy, dense, and unappetizing to decay. Why? Because decay needs oxygen, and beneath still water, there is none. No air, no fungi, no bacteria chewing away at the fibers that give wood its strength. Archaeologists proved this centuries later. The Viking Oseberg and Gokstad ships, buried in waterlogged soil for over a thousand years, still hold their shape. The piles beneath Venice, thousands of them, have sat under seawater for 600 years, carrying an entire city. The old craftsmen might not have known the science, but they knew the results. They would drag logs into ponds and leave them there for months, sometimes years. The longer the soak, the stronger the timber. When pulled out, it would dry slow and hard, like stone that once breathed. If you're a modern survivalist or homesteader, this same trick still works. Take your green wood, sink it in clean, moving water for a few months. It leaches out the sugars and saps that attract pests. Then dry it slowly in shade, never sun. The result? Wood that's dense, rot-resistant, and strong enough to outlast generations. But while water preserved the heart, fire guarded the skin. Across Europe and Japan, builders learned that a brief kiss of flame could turn soft wood into a warrior. They didn't burn it. They hardened it. In Japan, the method became known as Shosugiban. But the same idea appeared in medieval Europe, in barns, bridges, and shipyards. Builders would gently char the outer layer of a beam until it blackened, then brush away the soot and seal it with oil, fat, or resin. That blackened skin, a thin shell of charcoal, made the wood almost immortal. Charcoal resists water. It repels insects. It even blocks sunlight from splitting the grain. And when sealed with oil, it becomes a natural armor, glossy, dark, and almost metallic. In many medieval villages, you can still see the proof. Black beams standing in old churches, barns, and manor houses, long after untreated ones have rotted away. To recreate it today, heat the surface of wood with a flame until it turns deep brown or black. Wipe it clean, let it cool, and coat it with beeswax, linseed oil, or pine resin. That union of fire and oil creates a finish no chemical store-bought stain can match. A finish that endures. Water cured the core, fire shielded the surface, and earth, the trees themselves, gave the final ingredient. Medieval builders didn't buy treatments. They made them from bark, sap, and resin from the land. Oak bark was rich in tannic acid, a natural enemy of rot. They'd boil bark or oak galls in water,
to make a dark, bitter solution and brush it over wood. It soaked deep, leaving behind a film too acidic for fungi and too unpleasant for insects. Pine resin was another secret. Mixed with animal fat or melted beeswax, it became a thick paste that sealed joints and cracks. Sometimes they'd stir in fine charcoal dust, not for color, but to absorb heat evenly and protect against cracking. It smelled of smoke and pine, and once hardened, it could resist rain for decades. You can make it even today. Melt beeswax and pine resin together. Add a spoon of natural oil like linseed or olive oil. Brush it warm over the wood. As it cools, it sinks deep into the grain, creating a seal that flexes with the seasons. Completely natural, completely medieval, completely effective. But their greatest secret wasn't material. It was timing. They knew when to cut the tree mattered as much as how it was treated. In the dead of winter, when the sap had fallen back to the roots, the wood was dry, clean, and tough. Cut in spring or summer, and it rotted, no matter what you did. Old carpenters would say, cut on the waning moon, build on the waxing. Whether superstition or science, the results were real. After felling, they never rushed the drying. No ovens, no kilns, just patience, stacking planks in airy sheds, spaced apart by thin sticks called stickers. Shade, not sunlight. Months, not weeks. Slow drying allowed moisture to escape evenly, preventing cracks and warping. It was nature's rhythm, and those who followed it built structures that endured for centuries. If you harvest your own timber today, follow the same law. Winter cutting, shade drying. No rush, because patience was the real preservative. When you piece these together, water curing, fire charring, resin sealing, and seasonal cutting, you begin to see why medieval woodwork has outlasted concrete. These weren't accidents. They were deliberate crafts honed through generations of observation, failure, and persistence. Guilds guarded the recipes. Shipwrights whispered the right timing. Monks preserved the rituals in old texts and monasteries. And though the world has moved on, the knowledge still waits, buried in the same way their beams were, beneath layers of time, but still intact. For the modern survivalist, this isn't just nostalgia, it's strategy, a way to build without relying on stores or chemicals, a way to make shelters, handles, and posts that last through rain and rot year after year. In a world where everything is disposable, this is how you build something meant to remain, how you build something worthy of time. When you understand the medieval secret, you understand the patience of those who built for their grandchildren, not themselves. So the next time you see an old beam blackened by flame or a ship pulled from the bog still holding its shape, remember, it's not magic, it's mastery. The mastery of water, fire, and earth used by hands that refuse to accept decay. If you value the knowledge that survived the centuries, subscribe to Forgotten Survival where forgotten wisdom isn't just remembered, it's reborn.